Hello and welcome. I'm Andreas Fertig. I work as a trainer and consultant primarily for C++. And I'm also the creator of C++ Insights. And this is also the tool I like to talk about in this series. Alright, I like to continue with lambdas and their display in the C++ Insights transformation. So the code you see here on the left is an example I um, like to use very often because it helps me to illustrate my point. Um, it's a max function, but I also like to point out that there is one in the STL, so don't bother to implement this yourself. What you're looking at here is not really a function. Um, it's a lambda, of course, um, which is stored in a variable max. And in fact, it's a generic lambda because the two parameters x and epsilon are auto parameters. And of course, inside, uh, it only tries to figure out which one of the two values is the greater one and returns that. That way we can invoke it in line number nine with max two comma three. And if we transform this, we have seen enough lambdas so far, then there, there's no big surprise. Um, we know that the generic lambda internally becomes a templated operator, as we can see now on the right, and it comes there with two parameters, two type parameters. The thing I like to talk about today is this comment, the const expr as a comment. Lambdas have been introduced. This comment is gone, so there's no const expr comment. Um, and with C17, we do see it. And the reason for that, and some of you may know, that lambdas with C17 have an implicitly marked const expr call operator. So this is an, a step the compiler does for us. It adds const expr to a lambda's call operator. And as far as my knowledge goes, um, it works roughly like this. When Clang parses the source code on the left, it creates the AST, the abstract syntax tree. It sees a lambda and it knows that it is in C17 mode. So it adds const expr to that call operator of the lambda. And it also stores the information that this const expr comes from the compiler and not from the programmer. Later then, after the front end stage, after parsing the source code, the compiler analyzes which function can really be const expr. So it looks into the function body, figuring out whether it satisfies all the requirements of const expr. And if this is not a case, we would get an error message if we put the const expr there, compiler telling us this function cannot be const expr. But because in this case, the compiler added const expr, we can say behind our backs, it simply takes it away. If the function body turns out to be not const expr, well, then the compiler takes away the const expr it added itself. And this is the reason why in line number 10 and 17 on the left, I don't know a way how to determine whether this function is really const expr or not. And you can see this, so if we add here a call that really makes max not const expr, and without a typo, then this const expr command is still there because this behavior, what I roughly described, is still the compiler adds the const expr and it takes it away later. So there, there is no cheating from the side of the compiler and this function will never be const expr as presented. The version before would be. It's just that a compiler tempers here behind our backs according to the standard by adding or removing the const expr it added itself. This is great because we don't have to add const expr here ourselves to all the lambdas, the compiler does it for us and it does it in the right and the correct way. So if the function body isn't const expr able, then it is simply removed. I hope this gives you an understanding what this curious comment on the right in the transformation is and should any of you have an approach how to improve this, um, how to really figure out whether this call operator is or isn't const expr, I would really be interested in a better solution than it is now. That's it for today. Stay tuned for the next episode.
Bye-bye.